Our modern internet has been shaped by the capabilities of the computers that make up the internet. Whether or not it's the computer at the end of the internet, the edge of the internet, or all the computer-like devices that power the internet, the routers and the other types of things, and all the computers in the cloud. Um, so the internet is really a reflection of some of the things that computers can do. And so an interesting trend in the future internet will be what will computers be able to do, and will we be designing computers in the same way? So uh, there, is a, there is increased interest and there's research going on into something that's called quantum computing. You may have heard this term before, and certainly I can't do it justice in a couple of minutes, but let me at least give you a sense of what the basics of quantum computing are. So modern computers represent data in terms of bits. So a bit is in either one of two states. It's either on or off. This is the basis of binary representation, which is how all the data that is stored and used by computers is represented, whether it's images, text, whatever. Every piece of data that you use on a computer is represented as this series of zeros and ones, and those zeros and ones represent states of actual transistors on the computer itself, whether the state is on or off. So this is probably something that you're familiar with, and this is something that, that this is a basic of computer design that goes back, you know, decades and decades and decades, right? Transistors are either on or off, and so the data is either a one or a zero, and everything in the computer is represented this way. And we, you know, regardless of what the data is, everything you see on the computer, everything you do on the computer is represented in binary format somewhere on the computer itself. So the you know typical computers today uh, work in terms of bits. Quantum computers, on the other hand, work in terms of qubits. And what qubits are is a way for quantum computers to directly utilize quantum states of matter. So certain elementary particles can actually be simultaneously in one of several different states depending with some probability. So I could have a, a qubit that is, has some probability of being a zero and some probability of being a one. So the qubit is not actually a zero or a one. The qubit can only be, we can only talk about what the qubit is in terms of probabilities. And this is a reflection of how the world actually works at very, 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 very tiny, tiny, uh, distances. So if you want things to get weird, and there are actually some great books about quantum mechanics that are sort of designed for, for children that you can probably read and understand, give you a sense of how strange things get when we get into very, 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 very small scales. So a, a particle has some probability distribution of where it is in the world. It can't be said until I observe it to actually be at any particular point. There's just some probability that it's at various places. So quantum computers are based on this, and I can extend the idea of a qubit out even farther. So I can have like a, a double qubit that can be, um, if I have two qubits, then they can be in four states similar to uh, 0, 1, 2, and 3 for typical bits. Uh, so, you know, this qubit might be, you know, 5% in this, 10% in this, 20% in this state, and then what does this add up to? 65% in this state. And so these qubits, um, and as I manipulate these qubits, the probability that they're in any, any particular state changes, and it's only at the end of the, co uh, of the computation that I actually collapse the qubit into a particular state. So in quantum mechanics, we refer to this as collapsing a particular particle's wave function. The wave function describes where the particle is in space, and in, at some point when I observe the particle, I know exactly where it was at that moment, and the wave function collapses at a particular point and then begins to spread out again. So so it's good that I took all those physics courses because I actually know like a tiny, tiny little bit about this. Um, but anyway, so quantum computing is this idea of can we design a computer that's based on this sort of probabilistic representation of data. Now you might ask, why would I do this? This seems like A, really difficult because it is clearly difficult. Uh, we haven't been able to design quantum computers that do much more than very, 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 very simple things. So this whole field is still very much in its infancy. The reason for doing this is that there are algorithms that quantum computers can run, that efficiently run, that's important, that regular computers cannot, that solve problems much, much more efficiently. So if I could create a quantum computer of a particular power, so at some point in the future I've actually had a quantum computer 50 or 100 years from now, uh, one of the problems that I could solve that would have a huge impact on the world is that I could factor. 
And remember, integer factorization being hard is the basis for all of modern cryptography. Basically, all of modern cryptography is based on this fact that it is hard to factor large numbers. If it becomes easy to factor large numbers, we are in trouble. We're going to have to redesign all of the encryption online and all of the currently encrypted data will be fairly easy to decrypt. So if I can build a machine that can factor, if I can build this quantum computer, and that quantum computer can efficiently factor using these new algorithms that can only be run on quantum computers, then that would be a huge change in the architecture of the computers that we use on a daily basis and just in the world around us. Again, I mean, probably the most earth shattering thing that could happen to computation and to computers and to the internet and really to society right now, other than discovering alien life, would be as if we can find a way to efficiently factor because that would just basically immediately decrypt all of the encrypted data in the entire world, and that would cause some very interesting things to happen. So if I can build a quantum computer, I can factor. Um, quantum computers also have other uses in solving other kinds of problems, but a lot of the interest and the excitement around them and some of the fear and some of the speculation has to do with the simple fact that they can factor very efficiently, and that would make them very disruptive to today's computing environment. So maybe in the future, alongside our traditional computers, we have these very specialized quantum computers that we use to solve certain problems. Maybe hundreds of years from now, we even have quantum smartphones.